20 years old, I saw a grown man weep. And I'm saying like ugly face tears. Here's what happened. Bill, good bluegrass guitar player, had been at band practice the night before on a Thursday night, I think, sometime during the week. For whatever stupid reason he did, he left his HD28V by Martin in his car overnight when it was cold. He brought his guitar in, which had stayed in the car all night. My boss, Warren, said, hey, Bill, you really shouldn't open that case yet. And Bill said, well, no, I'm really particular, so I want to make sure that you know exactly how low I want the action to be. And Warren and I both warned him, like, please don't open the case. It will crack the guitar. Here is where the tears come. I heard latches clicking open. I saw a case open, and I heard a thousand crackling sounds like bacon in a frying pan. And as we looked at his Martin HD28V, it cracked like the heaviest of relics I've ever seen. Just thousands of spiderweb cracks. And Bill broke down, started sobbing. So the really unfortunate reality with Bill's guitar is that he'd made a serious mistake that involved refinishing his guitar. And for him to refinish his guitar meant that it would never be worth what it would have been worth originally. And he would always know it. Uh, so he ended up sending it back to Martin. They refinished it. But in the book that comes with every new Martin that you get, it's called the Care and Feeding. It's the same kind of packet that's been in them for... Uh, I've seen them as far as the early 70s. Uh, one of the things that they talk about is avoid extreme temperature changes. Those can affect, Those can affect the finish. And they will not be covered under warranty. So he got his guitar refinished by Martin, but it was not covered under warranty. And it was a very sad day. So I don't sweat the actual temp. Hey, that's a, that's a good pun. I didn't even mean that. I don't sweat the humidity in my house around my guitars too heavily. I wouldn't worry about it. So I do keep a hydrometer around. So right now in here... It's 59 degrees, so it's pretty chilly down here in my basement. I'm working on trying to figure out what to do with heat in this room. But I'm at 52% humidity. The highest I ever got this summer in the basement uh, was 65. I run a dehumidifier down here all the time. I don't keep acoustic guitars down here in the basement. I keep them upstairs with us. But it's actually, I bet the humidity is actually probably lower there when we're running the AC in the summer. But all of that to say... I don't sweat the humidity of my guitars too much. I've never had a guitar crack from high humidity. I think there are guitar companies that are really trying to sell you on the scare factor of your guitar. And so I think if you're just aware of your guitars, if you are playing them regularly, the only guitars that I've really seen people like freak out that something terrible has happened is guitars that they have neglected and not seen in months. And so all of a sudden they open the case and they say like, oh no, there's a huge crack in this. When did it happen? I don't know. I've been, I haven't played it in a year. That's a problem. So if you have more guitars than you can see regularly, you probably have too many guitars. So whether you know it or not, there is coming for you a day in which this amazing guitar that you have dreamed about and you bought and it played so great in the store. There's coming a day in which you're going to pick that same guitar up and you're going to think, what? happened the action is so high or you're gonna say oh no it's so buzzy and the neck is so wrong first you are leaving the warmth and beautiful time that is summer and fall and the humidity starts dropping and you're like oh this is great i can go outside without sweating but then around january february your guitar the the strings just keep coming down and the harder you play, it starts buzzing, and so you start playing softer, and then you start thinking to yourself, what is wrong with this? And before you know it, your guitar is just buzzy and unplayable, and it is really not a joyful thing to play your guitar anymore. In the fall and the winter, your guitar will start to lose humidity. So as your guitar and the wood in your guitar contracts, that means you're going to start feeling the sides of the fret ends, especially on electric guitar. On acoustic guitar, you'll get that as well. If you have a bound fingerboard, it's a little better. Um, but you're going to start feeling those fret ends, and you're also going to see the action come down. 
And remember, action is the measurement of distance between the string and the fret. That is your action. And so your action is going to drop down low. And what will need to happen is that you'll probably just need to do a quarter turn of relief, lefty loosey, on the truss rod. And that'll bring your neck back up to where it's a normal playable action. And as you head into the warmer days of summer, all of a sudden you're going to look down at your guitar and you're going to think, oh, this thing is spongy and hard to play and the strings are so high. So as that guitar warms up and starts to receive more humidity, it starts to swell and get bigger again. And so as it does that, your action is going to come up. And if you're not careful, you're going to be just as uninspired with a thumpy, high-action guitar in the summer. So that's where you will either bring this your saddle down on your acoustic guitar, or you'll adjust the saddles on your electric guitar, uh, or your truss rod. One quick note, truss rods are amazingly helpful parts of guitar gear, but I think they're mostly misunderstood. They are used incorrectly. Your truss rod is meant to set the relief on your neck. So if you hold a guitar, and as you look down the neck of a guitar, you should see a slight relief. So what I'm seeing is from the nut up here, then it dips a little between the fifth and the seventh fret, and then by the twelfth fret, we're pretty flat. Occasionally, you'll see a hump as you get back onto the body of the guitar. Uh, I don't see that on my 2016 Gibson J45. So the truss rod is meant to affect the relationship of your neck to the strings coming over it from really like the 12th fret or maybe even the 7th or 8th fret on down to the 1st fret. So the relationship of the nut height to the string height at the 12th fret is all handled really by the truss rod and the nut itself. Where we use it wrong is when we say, oh my action is high on my guitar, therefore I need to tighten my truss rod. Because what happens when you tighten the truss rod, you get to where the neck is so flat that there is no way for a string to ring out on the 10th fret without, or on the 3rd fret without ringing out on the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th frets above it because it's just flat. We have to have some relief in order for that string to clear the frets all above it between that and the bridge. So the truss rod can be misused, but if you know what you're doing, you will understand that its secondary benefit is that it, it will affect action. So the truss rod is primarily responsible for the, for the relief of the neck. It does affect the action, but uh, don't use it inappropriately. So when your strings are too high, that usually means on an acoustic guitar, your saddle is too high and it will need to come down. When your, when your action is too low, usually in my experience, you know, 15 years of working on guitars a lot, Usually that means that the truss rod, because of the wood, is just too tight. So you can relieve that action. Rarely will you have to shim up the saddle. It seems like when you first buy a guitar, you're going to have the first freak out that first year with most guitars. Uh, once you make that first 365 days, especially if you live in a pretty moderate climate. So here in the Shenandoah Valley, it gets really hot in the summer. Uh, you know, we'll have a we'll have three or four weeks of 100 degree days and really humid. Um, and that's when guitars freak out July, August. But then we also have really cold winters. So we get to where we're going to have lots of single digits. Like this morning in December, it was 11 degrees this morning. So the first year, you're going to have the action go really high in the summer and really low in the winter. And then you're going to set the saddle and you're going to set the truss rod and you're going to pay attention to the guitar. Your guitar eventually will find this beautiful sweet spot in the middle in which it doesn't freak out in the summer, it doesn't freak out in the winter. There's going to be little tweaks, but usually those tweaks could get just absorbed into your normal string changing and your normal time with your guitar. So now it's time for me to clean up and just take care of my Gibson J45.
cleaned up, action brought down. Uh, this guitar didn't freak out as much as I thought it would. Um, I put the 13 to 56 from String Joy on. The A string is a 42 or a 43, uh, and a 56. So it feels it feels to my eyes uh, like the gauge is off. But as soon as I played it, it makes sense. It's balance tension. They feel right underneath my fingers. So let's listen to this. This is my amazing 2016 Gibson J45. You've seen this guitar a lot, but I really dig it. <laughs> Guys and gals of the internet, thanks for watching this video. I am Jeremy the Guitar Hunter. If you like this video, hit the bell down below. So subscribe and then hit the bell. That way you will get a notification when I post videos. I try to put them at times that I feel like you might be in a slump. You might be bored. You might be sitting around work thinking, I wish I could think about cool guitars right now. So that's when I try and post cool videos uh, that are just benefits to your life that will help you find cool guitars in real life. If you want to become a guitar hunter, go to jeremytheguitarhunter.com or exciting news, I got just the guitar hunter. You can buy t-shirts. I have new t-shirts coming. They're just going to be black. They're going to be very similar to the one I have on. Plain, soft, really comfy black shirt with just the white Guitar Hunter logo. Those should be mid-January. Thanks for watching this video. I really like you guys. I like reading your comments, even the... No, I don't like reading the mean ones. I like reading your comments. I like connecting with you. If you find cool guitars and gear, feel free to send them to me on Instagram. That's probably the easiest way to get in touch with me. There's something about that E chord. Especially when it's a little out of tune because I just put new strings on that just reminds me of old youth groups. Who's with me? I had a youth pastor that used to end every song. If we were playing an E, he'd play this like E7 thing. And then he would just look into the crowd.